Hey everyone, this is Colton with POSGuys.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at the CypherLab RS35. Uh, the RS35 is CypherLab's newest mid-tier mobile computer, and it's going to come equipped out of the box with uh, Android 10, access to Google Mobile Services, and a scan engine built directly into the top of the unit here. Uh, the next step up to this would be the uh, CypherLab RS35. It's gonna, that unit would come with better specs and a little bit of a broader feature set, uh, of course coming in at a higher price tag, but this is still definitely a very good unit. Uh, after running some tests with this device, we found that it's pretty darn comparable uh, feature-wise and performance-wise when compared to a lot of other mobile computers in its class. Uh, and it also comes in a bit cheaper than those scanners as well. Um, so with that, I'm going to start off the review by going over some of the basics about the device, uh, especially looking at on its appearance. Then we're going to dive in looking into some of the internal specs, uh, take a look at the scanner here at the top, and then finally wrap up uh, by going over some of the pre-packaged features, or sorry, software that comes on this device uh, and some of the accessories that you uh, can purchase for it. So without further ado, let's get this review started. So I zoomed you all in here a little bit closer so that you could get a better look at this device here. So appearance wise, it's gonna look pretty similar to other mobile computers on the market. Uh, you know, basically a smartphone there with a scanner on top uh, and then having a couple extra buttons than usual. So let me go into this a little bit. First off, it's gonna feature a 5.5 inch wide touchscreen with Corning Gorilla Glass. Uh, you're gonna have buttons on either side here on both the left and the right that's gonna trigger that button, shine it in your eyes there a little bit. Uh, you're also going to find um, your volume buttons on this side uh, and then on the other side you're going to find a programmable function button. This is really cool. I'm looking forward to showing you more about this later. Um, power button on top. Uh, on the bottom here you're going to have a, a micro, sorry, a, a USB-C port rather. Now this could be used for both communication and charging. Uh, and charging wise you also are going to be able to use a wireless charging pad and uh, on the bottom here, we have a six pin IO connector. Uh, the cable that comes with this device is really cool. Uh, let me pop it up here, I don't have it. So let me just, there we go, pop it in my hands there. Uh, so if you take a look at this, it's gonna have a, uh, that little pin connection here and these two prongs that come out on the side. Uh, you're gonna be able to pop that in. It's gonna snap into two little holes there on the side. Uh, I really like this because it's really hard to pull out. Uh, you're going to have to pull out both of these pins on the side to pop it out. And it takes a little bit of effort, not a ton, but what's nice about that uh, is, you know, if you have this on the charger and you knock it off the table, it's not going to pull on the port, uh, pull on the uh, port there on the bottom and mess it up. You know, that happens from time to time and that can lead to downtime. It's not a good deal. Uh, this connector port here uh, on the other end is just a standard USB-C or sorry, USB connection there. Uh, and it also comes with a power brick that turns that into uh, a wall outlet. So kind of nice there. Uh, it kind of gives you some versatility. Uh, as we're talking a little bit more about the battery on this, uh, the battery is a standard uh, lithium ion battery. It's hot swappable, meaning uh, you can pop it out and pop in a new battery when the other one dies and it's still um, going to keep the device. You're not going to have to restart it and open up all your applications again. Um, the battery is rated to last for about 12 hours, so you shouldn't need to charge it very often. It should be able to get you through a full shift. Uh, with the battery popped in, the whole unit is gonna weigh um, about 10 ounces, so a little over a half pound, uh, and that just gives the unit a very premium, rugged feel to it. Uh, and that rugged feeling is definitely backed up uh, with the durability of the unit. You're gonna get an IP65 seal, so dust, uh, moisture, isn't gonna be too big of an issue there you're gonna be able to uh, drop this about 500 times from about half a meter before it might start to break down. Um, at a maximum, you're gonna be able to drop this five feet onto the ground, onto concrete. Um, and there's an additional rubber boot accessory you can add on that puts it up to six foot um, going onto concrete. So definitely a very rugged, durable unit. You uh, shouldn't have to worry about your uh, employees, you know, being rough with it and breaking it. It should last you a good while. So now that we've gone over the general appearance of the unit, I'm going to go ahead and get into uh, some of the internal components. Uh, so as mentioned before, the RS35 is going to come loaded with uh, Android 10 and Google Mobile Services, uh, meaning that you're going to have access to the Play Store. Uh, and it's also uh, going to come standard with a octa-core processor clocking in at 1.8 gigahertz. 
uh, three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of flash memory. Though there is also a model uh, that is gonna come with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of memory. There's also a slot for uh, a micro SD card if you do need a little bit more memory. Um, you might run into that a little bit. One of the things that I don't like about this unit is that uh, with uh, the general base of software that comes in on it, uh, it does take up a, about 20 gigabytes of space. So you might find yourself running out. Thankfully, you do have the micro SD option. So, you know, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Connectivity wise, the RS35 is gonna come, uh, there's two different models. There's a Wi-Fi only version, and then there's a version that comes with a LTE cellular connection. So you can make calls outside of the four walls, so to speak. Uh, on the LTE model, there uh, is gonna be two SIM card slots and one SAM card slot. So you're definitely gonna have some uh, you know, flexibility with what carrier you wanna take on that. On top of that, you're also going to get GPS connectivity with all options. Uh, Bluetooth connection, near field communication, as well as the ability to read and write with RFID. So a pretty comprehensive suite of connectivity options. Going into the camera on this option, uh, on the back rear, you're gonna get a 13 megapixel camera and on the rear, sorry, on the front rather, you're gonna get a five megapixel camera. Uh, and when compared to other uh, scanners on the market, the scanners are, sorry, the cameras stack up pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna pop some photos on the screen now that I took with this camera. You can see it's pretty decent. It's a pretty decent camera. I think the next thing that we need to do is go into the scanner performance on the top here. So the RS35 is gonna come with two different types of scan engines. The first is going to be the CypherLab SM4, and the other is actually gonna be a Zebra scan engine, uh, the SE4470. So on the SM4 engine, um, it's gonna come with a little green dot with a white illuminator. Uh, and on the SE4470, it's actually gonna feature a little red crosshair with an illuminator. You can kind of see it here, very high tech here. So in terms of performance, uh, both of them are gonna perform pretty similarly uh, with the Zebra engine. You're gonna get a little bit of a quicker scan and you're gonna have a little more flexibility uh, scanning a little bit further away. In general, you're gonna get a, be able to scan barcodes from about one inch away up to about three feet with some of the larger codes. Um, and anything in the five to 10 mil length, you're gonna be able to scan around 10 inches. So both, like I said, both scanners are gonna be performed pretty similarly. Uh, as with most scanners on the market, the scanners can be programmed a fair bit. Uh, I'm actually gonna uh, pull it up and show you right now. One of the cool things about uh, this uh, particular device is that they have a built-in um, uh, a built-in uh, program where you can enter, uh, you know, you can add things like suffixes, prefixes, uh, carriage returns. So if we just pull up here, uh, right now the auto enter is disabled. We can go ahead and enter that here, and let's even add a suffix to be a little, a little spicy. Let's add a space there. There we go. Then we can go back, and if we pull up one of these codes here, and I just pull up the uh, notes program on this and scan that, boom, you're going to see it's going to automatically um, enter POS guys, and then it's going to auto add that uh, enter, or sorry, that uh, enter at the end. Scanning it with a QR code here, and then finally a really small, small bulk barcode. You're going to see it scans it there, and from farther away, you see it's kind of snappy there. So it struggles a little bit on here, uh, but with these really large codes, you're going to be able to get three feet out. Line it up there. Yeah, about three inches out. There you go, you can kind of see it there. So uh, yeah, it's a pretty responsive scan engine. Pretty pleased with it overall. Uh, and having those built-in features is really nice. Another really cool thing about this program um, is that you have a option to, oh, not that one. This one right here, you can actually add a little button onto the screen itself uh, so to trigger the scan engine so you don't have to hit these two buttons on the side. You have a small, medium, and large option uh, let's just go medium so you kind of get an idea. You can drag that around, boom, it'll shoot. If that's too small for you, you can upgrade to the larger size. Uh, and then there is a small size as well. So, you know, just gives you another option. That's pretty standard on uh, devices like this nowadays. So it's nice that they include it on this one as well. Uh, while we're on the topic of built-in features, there is one other program that I wanted to highlight. Um, I had mentioned it earlier, there's a little function button on the, on the side of the device here that can be pre-programmed. Uh, so you could do that from this uh, button here. 
Uh, right now, I have it set to launch Chrome, so if I was to press the button, it would pull up Chrome, but you can change that as well. So let's say you wanted to go and, you know, have a, pull up a calculator for any reason. You can scroll down here, gives you a list, pop it on there, changes up. So now when I press the button, it pulls up your calculator. So, you know, it's just kind of cool now that having that little extra button there and it's pretty easy to program. It's not super complicated. And finally, we're going to go ahead and cover the accessories uh, that are available with this device. So as mentioned previously, the device is going to ship with a little snap on charging cradle uh, with the two little prongs on the end. So that will come in the box along with the adapter. Uh, additionally, there are a couple other accessories. Um, there is a Velcro hand, hand strap here um, that's available. You're also gonna be able to get uh, snap-on trigger accessories, uh, a rubber boot uh, that will kind of increase the drop spec. I mentioned that a little bit earlier as well. Um, and then you also are gonna have some additional charging accessories. Uh, there's a four slot battery charger and then a five unit um, block charger along with the single unit version of that. Uh, so you kind of have some options there if you're working with a little bit of a larger fleet. Uh, but other than that, that sums up the review today. If you have any other questions, feel free to give our sales engineers a call. We'll definitely get you sorted out. Um, and with that, thank you so much for joining and uh, we'll see you next time.